What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today, again, it is week 37, Glassnode's Insights. Let's take a look at the on-chain analysis. Before we get into that, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Thank you to all those who have. While you're down there, be sure to turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up. Also, while you're down there, in the description is a link to the library channel. Go join us over there. You'll be happy you did. And thank you to all those who are watching me on library right now. I appreciate it. Last, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Anything you want, please just be civil in your discourse. It's so easy to filter your thoughts through a little bit of kindness and compassion. And we can all make the world the better place that we want to see. Thank you. Let's get into it. This week on chain, week 37, 2021, the Bitcoin market experienced a high volatility sell off early in the week, with prices initially breaking up to a new local high of 52,849 before selling down to a low of 44,196. What appeared to be the main driver on the sell side was a flushing out of excessive leverage in future markets. Meanwhile, in spot and on-chain markets, the historically significant trend of investor accumulation and long-term holding remains well and truly intact. Despite a 50-plus percent sell-off experience in May, a strong rally from the 29,000 lows, and now another sharp sell-off this week, hodlers appear unfazed. This week, we will explore both the leverage flush that in, uh, initiated the price markdown and deep dive into the observable dynamics in the on-chain Bitcoin supply. Look at that knife. Good time to buy. You tell me. Derivatives lead downside volatility. In last week's newsletter and video report, we covered how the growth in futures contracts open interest and increasingly positive perpetual swap funding rates in Bitcoin and Ethereum markets. This highlighted a growing risk that excessive leverage on a long directional bias could create a downsized price squeeze. On Tuesday, both markets indeed saw a significant sell-off, with Bitcoin trading down more than $10,000 in one hour. This event acted to clear out much of the accumulated leverage, with the market consolidating for the rest of the week. From the local high of $13.4 billion in open perpetual futures interest, the total of $4 billion worth of contracts, 30%, were closed out and cleared within the hour. Leverage has remained fairly steady at around $9.4 billion for the remainder of the week. Look at that drop off. Same thing we saw here. See here, every time it gets a little crazy, things pull back, shake people out, shake the weak hands out. That's the way the game is played. Um, decide if you really want to use leverage. Using the long liquidation dominance metric, we can see that just prior to this sell-off, futures markets actually experienced a brief short liquidation squeeze that aided in pushing prices up to the local high of 52800 Short liquidations represented 80% of the liquidations during this time. Immediately following this peak, the opposite occurred with the uh, proportion of long contract liquidations spiking to 68% as BTC prices fell over $10,000 from the highs. Options markets also saw a spike in volume as traders rushed to hedge their positions, the capture volatility premium. This has become fairly typical behavior this year where options markets consistently see elevated activity during market sell-offs. The total volume traded in options markets has been in recovery mode since a relatively lull in activity through May to July. During the hours around Tuesday, sell-off traded option volumes reached a multiple month high of $1.3 billion. After a very brief period of negative funding rates during the sell-off, perpetual markets have returned to slightly positive funding rates, suggesting the traders are still expecting upside per, uh, price momentum. Note, however, the magnitude of funding is much lower than it was prior to the crash suggesting that at least a partial deleveraging has occurred. Coin dormancy dominates. Next, we will review how spot and on-chain markets reacted to this sell-off. We start by looking at average coin dormancy, which presents 
the average age of the coins spent that day, adjusted per unit of BTC spent with two key takeaway observations. Dormancy did not spike during the sell-off, which indicates the average age of coins spent at the time were relatively young and older hands were not shaken out. Dormancy has continued to fall this week, returning to a lower bound of the 2020 pre-bull period, suggesting the market has a strong preference for longer-term holding. Revived supply is a metric that presents how much BTC volume was spent that was older than a particular age. We can use this tool to assess whether there is an influx of previously illiquid or hodled coins coming back into liquid circulation, or if old coins remain dormant. High levels of revived supply could, suggest, could be suggesting a negative shift in the investor confidence, whereas low values suggest a hodler conviction remain intact. During this week's one year plus revived supply has fallen remarkably low levels coincident with that seen in the 2020, 2020 pre-bull uh, period. On a seven day moving average basis, less than 2.5 BT, K BTC age one year above are being spent per day. This is nine times fewer coins being spent when compared to the 2021 bull market peak in January 2021, where over 22,500 BTC spent uh, as prices reached 42,000 for the first time. I like what this is telling me. This observation is confirmed by assessing the proportion of supply in the young hodled waves, those less than three months old. Here we can see that the coins younger than three months have reached an all-time low of 15.9% of the circulating supply. The converse of this is that older coins that um, older than three months now represent an all-time high of 84.1% of the supply. Historically, periods where young coins reach a minimum uh, a minima tend to correlate with late-stage bear markets blue after significant smart money accumulation has taken place. This is where hype and interest is uh, in the asset is at its lowest, while accumulation demand by smart money investors is at a relative relative high. It describes young coins being taken out of liquidation circulation and begin to mature in investor wallets. The opposite is typically true in late stage bull markets read the cycle tops and where the maximum number of old coins are spent and transferred to new investors attracted by hype, media coverage, and price appreciation. More, uh, sorry. Macro accumulation continues. Hodlers are often described as Bitcoin buyers of last resort, who step to uh, who step in during volatile down, uh, down swings in price and place their bids when the markets look the worst. These high conviction buyers are best appreciated on chain using coin ages. With our research suggesting that lifespans around 150 per 155 days is a suitable threshold between long and short term holders. 155 days ago in mid-April, the Bitcoin market was trading at $60,000, trading up towards the current all-time high. Thus, any coin purchases after the all-time high are generally going to be classified as short-term holder coins. The chart below shows that this week's high of 52800 over 16% of the coin supply was owned by short-term holders and in profit. What this reflects is the very large accumulation that occurred between the recent lows of 29,000 and up to the lower bound of the Q2 topping range. We can also see that long-term holder owned supply has reached 79.5% of the BTC coins this week, which is equivalent to the level reached in October prior to the bull market kicking off. In fact, on an absolute coin volume basis, long-term holders currently own most of the coins in history hitting 12.97 million BTC this week. Peaks in long-term holder-owned supply typically correlate with late-stage bear markets, which are historically followed by a supply squeeze and initiation of cyclical bull runs. <clears throat> Think big. It is quite impressive to see the volume of BTC crossing the 155-day short-term holder to long-term holder threshold has maintained a very positive rate since May. One could have reasonably expected it to slow dramatically as many coins that were initially purchased in Q2 of 2021 in the 50k to 64k range were sold at a loss in May and June. However, the charts above and the long-term holder net position change actually demonstrates that very large portion of the supply accumulated 
in the, that topping range remain unspent and tightly held to this day. At the moment, coins are crossing the long-term high age threshold at a strong rate of 421,000 BTC per month, given we have already established that more than 16.8% of the supply was accumulated in the recent 29K to 40 10, 40K range, where uh, there's a good case to be made that this trend will continue into October through December, 155 days after the May-July consolidation. Finally, we review the liquid and highly liquid coin supply CR methodology on a macro scale, which highlights just how unique uh, position, just how of a unique position the current market cycle is. For the vast majority of Bitcoin's life, there has been an expansion in the volume of coins that freely circulated and were spent frequently on chain. After the final capitulation sell-off for the 2018 bear market, liquid supply started to plateau a trend that persisted until March of 2020. Following the sell-off in March, a structural trend of increasing coin liquidity has dominated the on-chain supply dynamics as more coins transition out of exchange balances and into long-term investor wallets. After the moderate exchange inflows in May of 2021, this downtrend in a liquid coin supply increasingly hodled, hodling behavior has resumed, suggesting macro convention to hold BTC remains a dominant force in the market. It appears that despite significant volatility through 2021, long-term Bitcoin investors continue to accumulate and keep coins in cold storage. This, if you're hearing what I'm hearing, then this is amazing. I want to go back and look at this just for a moment. So when this started was January of 2018, okay, which was... The beginning of the bear market after the 2017 high okay then you had all of this long-term accumulation okay then you had all like is building 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 then september of 20 we started things really started moving you could see the price of bitcoin moving up but what's really amazing is that in this dip we're seeing this readiness to get going again, but yet we have not seen the large drop off like we saw in the past. That if this drop off like we see now is it, then this is fantastic because look at look at how the low of the entire market was right when this thing played out. Okay, but. And it only dropped like look at the pattern of price it's just drop 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 okay as this was all under accumulation with this accumulation it's up 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 okay very different very very different okay i mean maybe the accumulation could be go way more but it just seems like a different type of cycle okay many people call this a super cycle i tend to lean that direction and but no one has a crystal ball so we shall see i appreciate it thank you for listening again uh be sure to follow me over on library like subscribe share with a friend and let's tune in next week all right everybody i love you peace